my last video, I displayed this chart as Eileen Cannon's birthday and made the case that a November 17, 1981 chart could well explain what happened to her in 2022. Perhaps more importantly, could lead her into more trouble in 2024 through the cycles that are now in play in the spring of 24, summer, fall, etc. However, upon reviewing all the comments and digging a little further, the people that make the case for her birth date being something different, namely this birthday, February 6, 1981, are making a very strong case because they are citing the existence of voting records, meaning she herself provided this birthday when she made the registration. And we have to say it's highly unlikely that she would provide the wrong birthday when doing such a thing. For one thing, it's illegal. She's a judge. And even though she may be tilting quite MAGA, I doubt that she would provide the wrong birthday. Therefore, this is likely to be the case and so it still explains the situation back in 2022, although I won't go into a lot of detail. Suffice it to say that it involves the fact that around the time of the difficult event for her, she got herself into in the late summer, early fall of 22 and into December of that year, Saturn and Uranus were squaring in the sky doing their final square. First square was back at the time of the insurrection in January of 21. So having those two square in the sky and affecting your sun degrees definitely reflects the kind of jam she got herself into. There's more than that, but that alone is a very good explanation. However, the problem we're having now is that it means 2024. There are potential problems here now with the moon in Pisces. Saturn could still conjoin it, particularly if she's born in the second half of the day and the deeper into the day, the more problematic. But then she could also be born earlier in the day, in which case it wouldn't apply. Then there are other counterpoints here, like Jupiter is much better placed. And overall, I would say that the odds of her getting into trouble, particularly right away in April, they definitely drop a whole lot with a February 6, 81 chart. Moreover, when I looked at the connection to Trump's chart, there are some arguments for the November chart fitting well with this chart, but the connections are considerably more obvious if you use the February 6th, 81. In particular, her son then links to his Jupiter Uranus and makes a grand trine, also connects to his son as well. There are also same element, which often brings agreement, and her Mars connects with an exact conjunction to Trump's horizon angle. So my feeling is that this connection between charts definitely tilt the argument toward the February 681. So there you have it. I hope it's not too disappointing, but I will end by saying that yes, this chart is easier, but it's by no means completely safe in that, as said earlier, the Saturn to the moon could be a factor and the Uranus cycle as it moves into the later degrees of, of Taurus does make a square to her Sun Mars midpoint and that's definitely something that could be problematic and then of course we also look at further down the road which to be honest has always been my own feeling about where this was going meaning she will probably succeed in delaying this trial until the post-election period but once we get into that range, now we see that Pluto starts to conjoin her Venus and the Uranus will get deeper and deeper in Taurus, whereupon it's going to trigger her Mars Uranus square. And that's quite a bit more difficult. So I think in this case, we simply have to be patient and accept the fact that it's probably unlikely that we will see justice delivered to Trump in the Mar-a-Lago records case, even though, by all accounts, it is the most blatantly obvious violation of law. But such is life, such is the period that we're living through in the U.S. And we'll simply have to be patient and wait this out. Mm -hmm.